yes, tell me why I don't see this on more people's maps, because this one fact will make landforms so much more interesting, realistic, and diverse. No longer are the days of overly fractal and blobby coasts. Many people already make their world maps from continental and oceanic crusts shifting around, which is a great system because it's how it actually works. But most tectonic maps of constructed worlds that I've seen, including my own, go very large in scale. They have big plates for ocean and then for land, but if you look at East Asia, you can see that the boundary of the oceanic and the continental crusts are broken up into smaller minor plates. Many of the most interesting looking landforms and sea combinations, East Asia, the Mediterranean, and Caribbean, are interesting because they are made of a bunch of minor plates. Around the edge of the Pacific is the Ring of Fire, where the Pacific Plate subducts underneath the surrounding plates. This means that the Pacific Plate, being a dense oceanic plate, slides underneath the less dense continental and oceanic crusts to its west. The crust on top gets pushed upwards and volcanoes are created that build islands. These plate interactions create what we see of East Asia today, the peninsulas, the giant islands, and the small island arcs. The peninsulas are Korea and Kamchatka, Korea being land that was pulled away from Eurasia as the Amerian plate rotated. As this happened, the land rifted open in the plate's west, and Lake Baikal was formed. The Kamchatka Peninsula was made by continental crust that was pushed up and built with volcanoes from the Pacific Plate's subduction underneath the continental Okhotsk Plate. The major islands are Japan and Sakhalin, Taiwan, and the Philippines. I would talk about Indonesia, but I don't know what the f is going on down there. Japan was basically formed by the Pacific Plate subducting underneath the continental Okhotsk Plate, along with the Oceanic Philippine Plate subducting under the Okinawa Plate, and the Amurian Plate subducting under the Okhotsk Plate. This complex meeting of plates is why Japan has so many earthquakes and volcanoes. The line along which Japan is formed is easily visible from its shape, going linearly along the Okhotsk Plate and curving to the edges of the Amurian Plate under which the Philippine Plate subducts. Whew. Sakhalin is part of Japan, I think. That's no, like, ethno thing, I swear. So this would be the Japan I'm talking about in terms of landforms. During the last glacial period, it looked like this. Honshu staying an island, and Hokkaido and Sakhalin connecting to become a peninsula off of Russia. This map would be a juicy world build. This points out that if you're ever dissatisfied with what your map looks like, you can always play around with its sea level, or switch your big islands to peninsulas and vice versa. These can make for more natural and less artificial looking landmasses. Taiwan was made by the Oceanic Philippine Plate subducting under the continental Yangtze Plate. During glacial periods, it was attached to mainland Asia. The Philippines are created on a belt that sits between the Sunda and Philippine Plates. Both of these plates subduct underneath this belt to create the islands. It's a super complex convergent boundary. I'm taking a geology class next semester. I'll tell you the specifics of the details then. Switching to the small volcanic island arcs. The islands in between the Philippines and Taiwan are part of the Luzon Volcanic Arc, made by the Philippine Plate subducting underneath the belt that the Philippines sit on. The Ryukyu Islands between Taiwan and Japan were created by the Philippine Plate subducting underneath the tiny Okinawa Plate. On the other side of the Philippine Plate, the Pacific Plate subducts underneath it to create the Mariana Islands, ending at Guam. Coming off of Hokkaido on the eastern edge of the Okhotsk Plate are the Kuril Islands, where the Pacific subducts and forms volcanic mountains. And all the way up north, the Pacific Plate subducts underneath the continental North American Plate to create the Aleutian Islands and the Alaska Peninsula. Given all this, I think that we can reasonably make a rule that may be a bit geologically dubious, but in effect works for world building. On the minor and micro tectonic plates where major continental and oceanic crusts meet, Landforms such as peninsulas and big and small island chains will be created. These will form either along the side of the plate or at the intersection of the plates. The more plates there are meeting in one place, the more certain that there'll be a landform there. But remember, your world building does not serve the scientific models. Here, plate tectonics only exist as a tool to make realistic and good looking landmasses. You can always creatively override the science and no one can say shit about it because you're probably not showing the audience of your world the underlying plate tectonics and continental formation. And if you are, well, Godspeed to you. All of this is to say that around the coast of East Asia, there is a multi-layered string of islands between the Pacific Plate and the Eurasian mainland. 
where the minor tectonic plates interact with these is where some of the most interesting parts of your landmass will be. So, break up your tectonic plates into smaller ones along coasts, then screw around with them until you get something you like. Let's do that. Hey everybody, right now I'm just gonna put into practice the techniques of tectonic plates that I just went over. This is a map from my dungeons in Dragon's World. This up here is where the players are, and I decided that I really don't want to screw with lore, mechanics, world building right now. I just want to focus on the shape of landforms. So I'm just going to go into the closest place that has a coastal makeup similar to East Asia, and we're just going to work on the coastline there. The first thing to do is actually make the tectonic plates, and I think the best place to start here is with the biggest oceanic one. Uh, one thing that's important, here. There's two lines here that are essentially parallel. Try to avoid that because that's what makes things look artificial. So if I go up like this, I want this to go up like that. That's, a, that's just a bit better. Having an interesting shape on your biggest ones will make you have to do interesting things in order to make the other ones make sense. Putting yourself in a tough spot originally while doing this can make for more interesting things. So next we'll go with the largest continental crusts. So I kind of want this one, this neck, to just be one big thing. I cap all this stuff off, the continental ones. So obviously this being a continental crust, the land will change to be more land oriented, you know. Now let's take a page out of the Amerian plate, give it a big amount of land and then give it a little bit of ocean territory. Mm, I might want to break, I am going to break this. There's two better looking plates. This can be a continental area, although I do think there should be a continental plate in between the ocean and this mainland, just so we get more interesting. Very good. So we have a, we have a couple very thin plates right here, but that is no matter because we have some interesting blocky continental plates as well. This one can just be one big one, kind of like the Eurasia plate. This one's actually, I think this one needs to change now that I changed one over here. I still want it to be vertical though. I'm just splitting it in half. Uh, that's too, too parallel. We can start thinking of their direction. So just to make it easy, the big Pacific based plate is gonna be going the direction against here so that it subducts under these plates and creates different landforms. We have this one that's the neck, which is kind of based on the North America one. And then we have the Eurasia one. And just to be simple, I'm just gonna point them towards each other so that they create different land masses. So here's a good question. Which direction would this plate be going? Because it's at the mercy of many plates around it. I think it's this one simply because it has the most surface area with this plate and it's most directly being affected by the direction it's going in, whereas this one might kind of glance off of that one a little bit. But it's more interesting if there's variation in where the plates are going. So I'm just gonna have this one be rotating up like that. The small ones don't need to worry about where they're going, they're just being acted upon. How is this one gonna interact? Let's move it up this way. This one's moving that way, this one can move up here too. So now that we have our plate boundaries and we have our directions, we can start moving on to the more fun, but the also more difficult part, the land masses. This one is going down onto this one. They're both going the same direction, so let's just not even screw with any landforms that are being made here. But this one is going down onto this one, which a continental plus a continental means the land gets raised and mountains are created. So let's make a little, this plate is going away from this plate, so it's gonna become a rift valley. Make it a little deeper right there. This one's rotating up like this against this one, so we have another rift valley right here. And let's make it a different shape, make it a bit wider. And this one's pushing down on this one. This one needs to have some land on it. So this is going to be pushing up over here. So that means there's gonna be at least some islands like the Kurils that are forming. But over here, since this is pushing over here and making this subduct like that very directly, there would be one solid land mass coming up right here. So this is rifting out of here, so that wouldn't make any difference. This is being pushed into this continental. Let's create a big peninsula right up here. What is going on with these babies right here? This one right here is kind of like the Philippine plate because the Philippines plate is still going this way with the Pacific plate, but the Pacific plate is still subducting underneath it. I'm still gonna make islands with this Japan-like one up here. If I could make it something separate, that would be better. Give it a big island on the top. Let's just create 
one down here be the, the southern end of it and let's just say this one's pushing up over here so yeah this one can totally be a taiwan looking island all right now what about this one this oceanic crust is subducting underneath this small continental crust multiple continental crusts are going into it we can just make it all land and for now i'm just going to keep it an island but we can make it into a peninsula we can make it into whatever so if this one's going this way to the left there's going to be a little bit right here so we could just make a couple islands i would like to make this look like a different thing so if I can make it curve off like that mm, that's not feasible that has nothing to do with the tectonics we have kind of multiple Japans coming up and you know what I'm kind of digging it we have the Pacific plate coming up over here and one thing we can do is we can kind of create a, a Philippine like situation where they both subduct and just create a a oh, crap ton of islands here. There should be some subduction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the plate tectonics and make it so that there can be land over here somehow. This continental crust needs more actual continental part of it. You know what I'm saying? It needs more land. If we keep this direction, that just means that this continental crust has to come in like this. And I don't know how feasible this is for actual continental crust, but we can just create land. Look at that. This will be the actual like curl islands. It's going up this way, right? So let's have some land coming off of that. So what we have is a bit complicated and convoluted. The latest fragmentation of our map as we see it. Now I'm not gonna screw with plate tectonics as much anymore. I'm just gonna screw with what I like and what I don't like. What I don't like is how not unique a lot of these islands are. They're gonna be micro islands. This peninsula and this island have basically the same thing going on. And I really like it on the peninsula, so I think the island has to change. Put more focus right up here. I do like what we have here. It has good lines. It looks like this kind of fractally island that happens on East Asia, so it accomplishes its job quite well. The only thing is, this looks too much like Japan, and it looks like it's just one line that comes down and gets a lot more complicated down here. If I can add one thing right in here and maybe tectonically justify it, that would be cool. If I add this right here, it looks a little better. It makes it look a little more connected to this. Cool. I think I can go for this map if I were to go over it and change the shape of a lot of things, of course, but I think this would be a very cool map to go on. 